I'm going to show you how to modify a jig mold to pour spinner baits just like this. My name's Josh with Josh and Hunter's Adventures and welcome back to the channel. So basically what I wanted was I wanted a spinner bait for nighttime, a big heavy spinner bait, three quarter, one ounce. I could not find what I was looking for, so I decided to modify it. Today we're going to be showing you how to modify the do it poison tail jig mold to get spinner baits just like this. Let's check it out. Okay, so like I mentioned, this is the Do It Poison Tail Jig Mold. It's half ounce, three quarter, and one ounce. I'm going to go over some of the tools that you're going to need to modify this mold to be able to pour spinner baits. What you're going to need is you're going to need a block of wood, just a small piece of block of wood, a rubber mallet, a file, and if you have a Dremel, a Dremel is going to come in really handy and I'm going to show you why here in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and change the camera angle here and I'm going to show you exactly how to modify this to be able to pour a spinner bait. Okay, so we've got our mold here. We're going to uh, show you the components that you're going to have to have for this. So obviously you're going to have to have a spinner bait hook and I went with this spinner bait hook here. It's a Mustad 4 alt in a 3268NP. Um, it's a good spinner bait uh, hook. It's very, very stout hook. Uh, so you're going to need that. And I bought three different wires. I went with a 35, a 40, if I can pick it up, and uh, two different models of wire. So I have this open end you can see here, and I have this closed end here. Uh, you can see there how they're different. So I wanted to try two different ones. But basically, what you're going to have to do. And I'll show you exactly how I did this. I've already modified this mold, but I can show you very easily how I did this. So, if you're not familiar with making spinner baits, you're going to take the, the hook right there and loop it through the wire right there. Now, basically what I did was, is I just laid it down in there and figured out where I wanted my hook to be at. And as you can see, it's basically about right there. Now, what you're going to do after that is you're going to close the mold very carefully. You could tape it up even if you wanted to, and that would probably hold it in there a lot better. But you're going to close your mold up and sort of look at it, and it's going to hold it down in there pretty good. You're going to make sure that your hook is exactly where you want it to be. And what I did is I took this block of wood, and as you can see how this mold is made, the handle here is is farther apart than this right here and you're going to need something to lay it on that way you can get a good hit on it so i took a rubber mallet just like this right here and i hit it just as hard as i could pretty much just to basically indention uh, the mold where the wire actually was and then at that point you're going to take a file and you're going to be able to see the mark right there and i just very very slowly started cutting that wire mark out into my mold with this file. Now that's how I did it the first time. The second time I went to Harbor Freight and I picked up a Dremel, if I can get it open. I got this Dremel. Very uh, inexpensive. $25, $30 I think is what I ended up paying for it. And I, it comes with a bunch of different tools and I'm going to show you the exact one that I use and it works amazing. So I got this right here. It's a very small little disc uh, like a uh, cutoff wheel and it works amazing. And um, this thing has different speeds so you can slow it down, do whatever you need to do, uh, go as fast as you want it to go. But uh, this is a great, great tool for uh, modifying molds. So. If you guys are wanting to start modifying some of your molds, I highly recommend going and getting a Dremel. It makes it a lot easier. So let's go ahead and get everything set up. We'll go ahead and pour one. We'll, we're not going to build a whole jig or a spinner bait from start to finish, you know, skirt and everything. I'm just going to basically show you how to pour it, how I modified it, and how it does, because uh, I know some of you are probably going to be interested in actually how that it pours. So let's get everything set up here and we will pour one and I will show you guys how that it works. And you, that's another thing. I've always talked about this in my tackle making videos. When you close that um, 
mold, make sure you get a good seal. That's how you're going to know that you're going to get a really good pour. Um, and one of the other things that I did, I almost forgot, is this is a weedless mold. So it comes with like three base pins. So what I done was is I cut one to the length that I wanted that that way that it wouldn't fill up that whole cavity. And basically what I do is, is I trim, there's just a little bit extra right there and I trim it off. Uh, sometimes you will actually get just a little bit of uh, over pour right here on the eye, right here from the actual jig, but it's very easy to trim off and I'll show you exactly how to do that. So let me get the camera set up over here at the lead pot. We'll pour one really quick and we'll show you how it turns out. Okay, so I apologize for the lighting over here at the lead mold, but uh, we're going to go ahead and pour this. We're going to pour a three-quarter ounce. And we're going to take it over here to the table, and we're going to see how it looks. Okay, so here is the uh, mold after we've got it poured. We're going to take it out and see how it looks. Looks really good. And you can see how we have just a little bit to trim off right there on the base hole. I probably could have cut it just a little bit different on the base hole pin, but I didn't want to waste any more. Uh, basically, all I'm going to have to do now is, is trim off the extra right there. And I go into the top, cut that little piece off, and um, make sure it's cooled down. I don't want to grab a hold of it. Take my file, and I'll just clean it up really good and make it look really nice. And there it is. That's the finished product. You can see we got it all cleaned up. Looks good. Let's go ahead and throw a little paint on it and we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I did want to throw in here how I paint these spinner baits because uh, a normal jig you're able just to dip right down in the powder paint, but with this wire it's a little more difficult. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that. Let's fire up our torch. And I will show you how to do that. Today we're going to be painting this one June Bug with just a little bit of red on the bottom of it. Now what you're going to do is turn that flame down just a little bit, heat it up just a little bit. And I take a paintbrush, okay, dip it down in there and then right on the mold just just tap it on there. I don't know if you can see really good how I'm doing that, but you get the idea that this is how to do it. I like this June bug color, man. It looks so good. Then I run it over it one more time just to heat it back up. Make sure I got plenty of color on there. Because like I said, you're really just dusting it on there. And then on this one, I'm just barely going to put just a little bit of red right on the throat of it. That's it. And there it is, guys. I'm not sure how well it shows up in the lighting. But uh, great, great spinnerbait. I've already caught fish on these. I've had it now for probably two to three weeks. And uh, it's just a great, great bait. And very easy to make. Okay, so modifying these molds to make a spinnerbait out of a jig is not hard. Do not be intimidated by this. I know they're expensive. Just take your time and I promise these will turn out really good. You can make some great spinnerbaits out of these. And I'm going to show you the finished product here after we got the eyes on it right here and all finished up I gotta uh, go ahead and put the other components on that but I've got a couple spinner baits here that I want to show you on the colors here that we've made so far black and blue there with a gold uh, blade really good color black and blue is always a, a great great color got a red and black color right there and we've got a the one that we originally showed you that June bug chartreuse with the twin tail fat Albert on the back of it. 
But guys, there's something about making your own tackle and then going out and catching a bass with it. It's just, it, it's enjoyable and you, uh, you're appreciative of the stuff and you're able to design a lot of different stuff. So if you guys got any questions at all, go down in the comments, ask me a question. I'll be glad to answer them the best that I can. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, leave me a thumbs up. And don't forget, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. Till next time, this is Josh with Josh and Hunter's Adventures, and thanks for watching.